Good morning everyone and very warm welcome to one and all. Welcome back to A square classes and we are beginning with a very new topic of your ecology session. That topic is environmental factors. Till yet we have completed ecological hierarchy and we are going to begin with the new topic that is environmental factor. Environmental factors are also called as ecological factors. Environmental factors are also called as ecological. These are the factors or environmental factors. Environmental factors. Factors. Environmental factors are the factors which affect the affects the affect the life of living organism life of living organism what did i set i set ecological factors are the factors or the environmental factors are the factors which affect the life of living organism and there are two basic type of factors which involves which, which involves there are two basic type of factors which involves abiotic factors and biotic factors factors and biotic factors biotic factors are those factors factors are those factors which affects the life history functioning sustainability abiotic factors are those factors which affects the life history functioning and sustainability of the Biotic factors are those factors affect the growth and reproduction. Growth and reproduction. The examples of abiotic factors are temperature or water, soil, you can see temperature, water, soil and air. And you can even add as light. What did I said? I said we are beginning with the environmental factors. We have seen what is environmental factors. Environmental factors are also called as ecological factors. And it is called as or the factors which affect the life of the living organisms. Which includes abiotic factors and biotic factors. What are abiotic factors? Abiotic factors are those factors which affect the life, history, functioning, and sustainability of the living organism which includes the examples of it are temperature, water, soil and air and light. Biotic factors are those factors which affect the growth and reproduction of the organism. Such factors are called as biotic factors. Clear? Now just make a note of it. Abiotic factors are also non-living factor if we talk about abiotic factors and biotic factors i'll tell you again write it Abiotic factors are non-living factors no <coughs> so i said abiotic factors are those factors which are non-living factors or non-living substances which affect the life of living organism and i said biotic factors are those factors which are related to which are related to growth and reproduction of the organism which of the life of the living organism and this are the living factors put the very first topic and very important topic of your abiotic factor that is temperature we are learning abiotic factor among that we are going to see the first which is 
temperature temperature is first of all it is very relevant factor very relevant factor temperature is very relevant factor of the abiotic component which affect which affect various life forms i said temperature is very relevant factor of the abiotic component which affect the various life form another point is the temperature can be zero temperature can be zero in some areas in some areas and it can be 50 degrees celsius also in some area can be in some areas like those areas are polar where temperature can be zero polar areas and it can be 50 degrees celsius also in some areas like desert like desert mark the point i said temperature can be zero in some areas and like polar regions and it can be 50 degrees celsius also in some areas like des desert temperature can be even in minus or negative temperature can also be negative i have told you arctic region the temperature belongs from minus 7 degrees celsius and it can go to minus 33 degrees celsius remember i have taught you this very well example arctic or north pole region north pole region you can also write it as arctic circle got it yes then comes temperature basically affects temperature basically affects affects kinematics of enzyme kinematics of enzyme what is the temperature affect temperature basically affects the mark this line mark this statement mark this point temperature basically affects the kinematic of enzyme i'll write it there which in turn which in turn affects the metabolism of living organism of living metabolism of living organism and it can be it can affect the metabolism of living organism and it can be in the variant form affecting catabolism and affecting catabolism and anabolic catabolic you can also write it as catabolic and anabolic reaction i have taught you very well in living world what is catabolic what we have seen also this chapter this two terms in living world very properly and even in biomolecules chapter in class 11th affecting catabolic and anabolic of the body since few years the temperature variation is seen in a vast range globally this may affect few amount of species this may affect few life of species mark my point it says there are recently there is recently there is variation recently there is variation in the nature 
globally which affect which affects the life of some species species as a cause of global warming warming let's make a note of it I said we are going to see abiotic factors. We have seen temperature. We are, I said it is very relevant factor, very relevant factor of the abiotic component, and which affects the various life forms. Forms. The temperature can be zero in some areas like polar region, and it can be also 50 degrees Celsius in some areas like desert. Temperature can also be negative in from range from minus 7 to minus 33 degrees Celsius, which can be in the range of North Pole region. I have taught you where is North Pole region in zones of Earth. Then comes temperature basically affects the kinematics of enzyme, which in turn affects the metabolism of the living organism. And it can be in the variant form affecting the catabolic and anabolic reaction. These two are reactions togetherly forming a metabolic reaction going on in the body which affects this. And recently there is variation in the temperature globally which extincts the life or which makes the difficult of life of some living organism. Now we are going to see a few rules of temperature. A few scientists have said few rules that to adapt themselves to the temperature, to adapt themselves to the surrounding temperature, few animals have some great physiological variation, few morphological variations, and we're going to see it over here. Few rules I have said we are going to see. The very first rule which we are going to see is The very first rule which we are going to see is Bergman's rule. Bergman, a scientist, Bergman's rule, a scientist, Bergman's rule, a scientist says that, Bergman was a scientist and he says that the mammals or the organisms which are living in a colder area have greater body size. I said the mammals or the organisms living in a colder areas in a colder areas have the organisms living in the colder areas have greater body size have greater body size than the organisms areas living in warmer areas warmer areas have small body size have small body size what did i say i said the mammals or the organisms living in the colder areas or at a low temperature have greater body size have big body size to adapt why is it so and with a living size and the organisms living in the warmer area have smaller body size why this is so this is so to adapt the heat to adapt to prevent the heat loss prevent the heat loss and adapt to the temperature and adapt itself towards the temperature adapt itself there comes another point another got it bergman's rule said that the mam mammals living in a particular colder areas have great body size with the mammals living in a warmer areas have smaller body size and then it says this is so to prevent the heat loss so to adapt towards the surrounding temperature got that now next rule says about ellen rule bergman's rule is done now we are going to ellen's rule state that what does it state it states that birds 
birds or mammals living in a colder areas have colder areas have shorter ears and limbs to prevent heat loss to prevent heat loss from the body prevent heat loss from the body what it is said it states that the birds or the mammals living in a colder areas birds and mammals living in a colder areas have short years and limbs to prevent heat loss of the body and this is what we can see we can call it as as morphological variations we can call this type of variations as physiological behavior physiological physiological variation physiological variations okay one more thing i'd like to tell you the Uh, I'll tell you few adaptations and few physiological variations also. Listen. The polar seals have a thick fat, have a thick fat deposition, thick fat deposition, a throat region, throat region. called as blubber called as blubber called as what blubber called as blubber which prevents which prevents the heat loss which prevents the heat loss this is called as physiological variation example of physiological way why physiologically they have physiologically modified their organ they have physiologically modified their system into such way so that they can reduce the heat loss from their body to adapt to the surrounding temperature such type of organisms can see in a polar seals you can see it even eels also polar seals polar eels have a thick fat deposition in the throat region they are referred to as blubber which prevents them prevents the heat loss from the body clear now comes the point next point one more physiological variation can be seen in plants is few plants have few plants have a thick cuticle covering thick cuticle covering on the leaf which prevents excessive loss of heat which prevents excessive loss of heat leaf which prevents thick cuticle covering which prevents excessive loss of water actually sorry loss of water and the stomata are also located are also located deep in the leaf pits they have a special pathway they are sorry are uh, they they have they have a special pathway special pathway called as cam pathway cam i have taught you this all in photosynthesis go back and refer your 11th class notes you will get clear what i have taught you they have a special pathway called as cam pathway and their stomata remains close their stomata remains close during daytime their stomata remains close during daytime what did i said i said 
Few plants have a thick cuticle covering on the leaf which prevents excessive loss of water. The stomata are also located deep in the leaf pit so that they cannot lose water that easily and they have a special pathway called a scam pathway for photosynthesis. Their stomata remains closed during daytime and it functions during night time and functions during night and functions during night time. This type of variation is also called as physiological variation to prevent the to come or to accomplish itself based on the surrounding according to the surrounding. This type of variation is also called as physiological variation. Physiological variation. Now comes another point, you know, another example. Plants like Opentia. I have given you the worst example of polar seals, eels. Then I have given you the example of the plants have thick cuticle, the somatas are closed. And the third example I am giving you, plants like Opentia, plants like Opentia, market, have modified leaves into thorns, leaves into thorns to prevent loss of water, to prevent loss of water. I have said plants like Opentia have modified leaves into thorns to prevent loss of water and the stem of this, the stem of the plant becomes flat. And carries regulatory function. A variation is called as for to adapt the temperature towards its surrounding is called as morphological variation. Morphological variation. This type of variation is called as morphological variation. Got it? What did I say? I have given given you three examples of it. That is Ellen's rule. I have taught you Bergman's rule for temperature. Bergman's rule same says thing that in the colder environment, mammals and birds have larger body size, which compared to in, cold, in warmer environment, mammals have smaller body size. Ellen's rule says that it states that the birds or the mammals have areas of who are living in a colder areas have shorter ears and limbs to avoid or to prevent the heat loss from the body. We have seen such examples who, which organism prevent the heat loss by physiologically or morphological variation which involves the polar seals or eels have a thick fat deposition in the throat region called as blubber which prevents the heat loss from the body that is called as physiological behavior. Why it is called as physiological behavior variation? Because the physiology of the body system or the organ system has been modified not the morphology. When morphology of the body system has been modified that type of variation is called as morphological variation. I'll come to it. Now comes, I have given you the other example of physiological variation which involves few plants have a thick cuticle covering on the leaf. If this is your leaf, there is a few covering of a cuticle on the surface which prevents loss of water from the leaf and the stomata are always closed in the deep leaf fleet. This stomata is always closed between deep leaf pits. Okay. They have a special pathway which are also called as CAM pathway for photosynthesis and their stomata are closed during daytime and it is open to carry out the function in the night time. This was also one of the example for the physiological variation. Now I have told you one more example for the morphological variation. Morphological variation I said you that plants like Opentia have modified leaves into the thorns which prevents the loss of water. What does it prevent? It prevents the loss of water. The stem of the plant becomes flat and carries regulatory function. Whichever the stem of the plant has been grown, it carries or regulates the temperature, regulates the loss of water from the leaf surface. That type is called as morphological variation. 
Now give the very next topic regarding the temperature. We are going to see adaptation of organism towards the temperature and then we are going to see effects of temperature on few things and we conclude the temperature. Write the type of organisms based on their adaptation, to, adaptation towards the temperature. Now we are going to see the types of organism based on their adaptive tolerance towards the temperature and adaptation towards the temperature. To based on tolerance towards the temperature. Based on tolerance towards the temperature which involves two basic type of organism. It involves urethermal and stenothermal. All are the organisms are the organisms who can tolerate who can tolerate wide range of temperature wide range of temperature who can tolerate urethermals are the organisms who can tolerate wide range of temperature throughout the year through out the year the very good example of it is family asteraceae plants family asteraceae asteraceae now comes stenothermal the organism it great narrow range of temperature narrow range of temperature stenothermal its narrow range of temperature is called stenothermal the very good example of it is polar bears lizards birds lizards and few mammals also not mammals you can write i can give you the example of eucalyptus we cannot able to adapt to the temperature or the cold blooded organism platypus or all that forget it write it as polar bears lizards etc then comes but amphibians the plant which gives or the plant which is the example of this family is Asia Tridenta also now comes the stability now comes the stability of an organism towards the temperature okay. Ability to maintain body temperature and it is of two types which includes the first one is poikiliotherms thumbs and or homo homoithermals this poikilio thumbs are organism whose body temperature varies whose body temperature varies according to surrounding temperature according to surrounding temperature according to surrounding temperature poikilotherms are the organisms whose body temperature varies according to a surrounding temperature an example of it is these are all the cold blooded 
organisms that is reptiles and amphibians amphibians these are also called also called as cold blooded also called as cold blooded organism these are also called as cold blooded organism and these are ectothermic these are ectothermic organism which releases heat when required ectothermic organisms got it homeot homeothermals these are the organisms these are the organisms whose body temperature whose body temperature remains constant is constant all over the year the example of it is birds and mammals birds and mammals and then involve these are also called as warm blooded also called as warm blooded organism warm blooded organism endothermic in nature they are endothermic in nature got it i have said you based on the ability to maintain the body temperature they are of two types poikilotherms and homeothermals poikilotherms are organism whose body temperature varies according to the surrounding temperature and homeotherms are the organism whose body temperature remains constant over the area of over the area or over the surrounding you can write it as over the surrounding okay and then it is also called as cold blooded organism cold blooded organism this is also called as warm blooded organism the very good example of it is reptiles and amphibians examples of it are birds and mammals and these are also ectothermic organisms and they are also endothermic in nature now last point in temperature put effects of temperature on the organism now just we are going to see the new topic or the continuation of the topics in the temperature which involves the effect of temperature on the organisms now put the heading as effect now we are going to see the effect of temperature on the organism there are six basic factors which affects the effect of temperature which shows the effect of there are six six basic factors which shows the effect of temperature on the organism which includes the factor first is of growth the second factor is of reproduction the third factor is of sex ratio and the fourth factor is of coloration the fifth factor is your behavior and sixth factor is your morphology these are the six factors which are affected by the effect of temperature on the organism the very first topic or the very first chapter is the growth rate of growth increases with increase in temperature once you increase the increase the temperature there is seen the number of the what is growth growth is basically increase in number or increase in size right isn't it that growth yes growth it is growth is actually increase in number or increase in size that phenomena but once you see that there is increase in temperature there can see there is saw that the growth increases their number increases and the size also increases this type but once you crosses the optimal level optimal level that is the minimum level what is required for the growth beyond which it begins to decline beyond which it begins to decrease that is called as growth how temperature affects the growth factor got it basically growth is increased when temperature is increased got clear next point example of it is x of mackerel take 207 hours to hatch at 10 degrees celsius and 5 hours to hatch at 5 degrees between for, when you reduce the temperature by 5 you can see the number of eggs and the number of time has been reduced it took it 
took 207 hours at 10 degrees Celsius, but it took only 5 hours for growth of 5, 5 at 5 degrees Celsius. So this is what one example which explains the growth and temperature relationship. Now comes reproduction, maturation of the gonads. Gonads are those those organisms or those actually glands which secrete which secrete I'll tell you egg and sperms which secrete your sex cells those are gonads gonads are the organs which are present in the body which secrete sex cells basically maturation formation of gametes are controlled by temperature you know human sperm production as you I have taught you in reproduction human sperm production requires two to three degree less temperature of the body temperature for the production for the spermatogenesis and this the due to this reason the testis have it's in, as the testis is encased in the scrotal sac it has it prevents it maintains the required temperature of the testis it gives the required temperature of the testis so you can understand how reproduction is affected in the case of grow in the case of reproduction got it why formation of gametes basically depends on temperature for example in human male in male human the formation of sperm or spermatogenesis required two to three degree less body less temperature of that of body temperature that's why the testes are present in the scrotal sac which gives a proper amount of temperature to the testes for the formation of the sperm that is one very good example another example of it is in grasshopper if the temperature is increased what it is done if the temperature is increased by 22 to 32 degrees Celsius that is 10 degrees Celsius temperature is increased increase there is egg laying of this uh, organism has been increased 20 to 30 times that is also one very good example of the how growth or how temperature affects the reproduction but on beyond extreme temperature the fecundity declines or the level of reproduction declines or the increase in reproduction declines or increase in the formation of the gametes declines next point or the next topic comes the sex ratio Daphnia produces only females at normal temperature it is very very cell we have learnt it in parthenogenesis I have taught you few human bees or few few bees few humoral bees produces only male at normal temperature but once they get high high temperature they produces both the organism this and another example is Daphnia produces females at normal temperature but produces both males and female at higher temperature my friends can you see how sex ratio also depends on temperature I have taught you how growth is dependent on temperature how reproduction is dependent on temperature how sex ratio is dependent on temperature now comes coloration coloration is also famous by pigmentation Animals have a darker skin in warm and humid areas and lighter skin in arid color cool areas. This is also called as global rules. It says that those animals who live in excessive temperature, excessive high temperature, they are darker in color with compared to those organisms or those animals which live in a colder area or a warmer area, warmer areas colder areas organism or the animals are fair or a light in color with compared to the organism or the animals which are present in the darker area and this rule was also called as Glogger's rule this can be applied in the human beings also the human beings living in a high temperature area like African African countries have darker skin with the human beings living in the polar region or in the region of the area where the temperature is cold area where there is a colder temperature we can see find like um, we we can even find the areas of the con europeans we can see us us people they live in a colder climate so they appear to be a lighter in color and though organism or the species which is living in dark or a hot temperature they appears to be a darker the l second last point which comes as behavior how temperature affects the behavior Tick and certain snakes, pit and viper, locate their warm blooded preys by body heat emitted by later. They preserve their preys 
by amount of heat produces by them to be emitted on later on this is one of the effect of temperature which can be mostly seen in ticks which can be also seen in snakes snakes lay their eggs when there is a specified amount of temperature for proper laying process another comes the morphology in colder areas the as i told you the rules of bergman's rule he he only says the organisms living in colder area is have larger size with the organisms living in a warmer areas this is what the morphology colder areas and generally increase while the extremities decrease as of their size increases as of their bulgia the extremities of the dim decreases the limbs increases this morphology is based on the combination of two rules that i have taught you very well that is bergman's rule and ellen's rule and the new rule which we have left was the red was the glogel's rule which we which we read in colorations that animals have a darker skin in warm areas and lighter skin in old areas thank you thank you very much today we have seen lot of live and beautiful examples we have seen temperature we have seen effects of temperature we have seen type of organism which involves in temperature which have ability to maintain his body temperature that type of organism poikilotherms homeotherms and then we have seen adaptation to the wide range of temperature to the narrow range of temperature and so on next class we will begin with the other factor other abiotic factor which involves basically water light and soil and then we will move on towards the very cream our adaptation topic thank you very much meet you in the next class good luck